Welcome once again back to the channel, the real history of football, Sheffield, the home of football. If you're new to the channel, we walk around Sheffield talking about its incredible football history. In the last video, we talked about the birth of football culture in Sheffield, the first happening anywhere in the world. At the very heart of football culture is the idea of teams competing against each other to see who is best. Before we go to games, the conversation centres around what will be the score, who will win. How does the result affect other things? This conversation also spreads to the teams that we don't even follow, as it's the element of competition itself that we find fascinating. The element of competition in sport in general is where we get a lot of our enjoyment from being involved either as a spectator or a participant, and football is no exception. I know it doesn't seem like it at times, especially if, like me, you don't follow one of the top six or seven clubs in the Premier League, but it's that element of competition that makes football so very entertaining. In association football, we have two forms of competition, leagues and cup tournaments. The world's biggest league, the English Premier League, boasts annual viewing figures globally into the multi-billions. Individual clubs in the Premier League can experience live season attendance figures at well over a million. Cups are equally as popular, and in some cases more so than leagues. An estimated 1.5 billion tuned in to watch the last World Cup final in 2022. This is a figure just for one game, the final. Today, leagues and cups in football are massive and you have to look hard to find nations on the planet that don't have any form of competitive football available to watch. The concept of winning something from competition was of course not new. In ancient times, the prize for winning was literally your very life. By the time we get to the mid-1860s, cups, arrows and bells had all been awarded to individuals for achievement in horse racing, archery and golf. But the idea of awarding a cup to a sporting team was something different and new. A team game having a competitive knockout tournament or league resulting in a trophy had to have been invented by somebody somewhere. So where did competition start in association football? If you look across Wikipedia and other so-called authoritative online sources, then you find the usual confusion and lazy misinformation. Even searching for the first ever football trophy will bring up lots of results mainly referring to the oldest. The oldest, of course, can mean the first, but your search results will nearly always tell you that the English FA Cup of 1871 is the world's oldest football competition. Commentators on TV and radio around the world will proudly repeat the same claim every late May when we watch the final from Wembley. The commentators tell you that competition in football was introduced by the wonderful English FA for the pleasure of the world to follow its lead from 1871 onwards. Association football for the first 10 years of its existence was motivated not from winning trophies but from a need to stay fit in the winter and for others a need for social activity either as a player, member or spectator. The pleasure of playing the game was simply on the day to beat your opponents. There were no organised leagues and certainly no tournaments that resulted in trophies. Something had to happen for the notion of wider competition to be injected into the game. So where did we get that idea that eventually led to the development of the Champions League, the World Cup, etc.? Where did that idea come from and whose idea was it? Well, that idea was born and did happen, and it happened right here. This is the location of Sheffield's Surrey Theatre. This area of Sheffield, now called West Bar, was in 1865 called Little Piccadilly, an area of cramped alehouses, music houses and theatres. The most popular was the Surrey. In its day, it was a big entertainment complex, but on the 25th of March, 1865, it succumbed to a large fire and burnt to the ground. Before we carry on, let's, as usual, take stock of where we are and where we're going to walk during this video. 
So once again, we're in Sheffield, England, and we started at the cathedral in Sheffield, right in the center of Sheffield. We walked down the hill, down North Church Street to the West Bar area near where the Sheffield Law Courts, and this is where the Surrey Theatre used to stand. We're next going to walk from the West Bar area down Bridge Street to Ladies Bridge, then past where the old castle used to stand, Sheffield Castle, to the Blanc Street Bridge where the sheaf meets the Don. And then we're going to walk across to Park Square. And at Park Square, we're going to view where the Shrewsbury Works used to stand at the bottom of Broad Street, just here. That's where we're going to finish. We can see the location of the Surrey Theatre from old maps. It's just down from the corner of Workhouse Lane, which is where we are now. It's strange that the genius of making football widely competitive was sparked out of a disaster that happened on this now lonely piece of grass in 1865. The Surrey Theatre was owned by Thomas Yeoden, who saw the disaster at the Surrey as an opportunity to rebuild. He spent the rest of 1865 renovating another theatre on Blount Street, then nearer to the Sheffield Victoria Railway Station. Yeoden called his new theatre the Alexandra. At the same time, Yeoden was fascinated by this new emerging sport called football and realised just how popular it had become in Sheffield. Yeoden saw that people didn't just play football, but they came to watch it as a form of entertainment and social leisure activity, and they paid to do so. Yeoden wanted to cash in on football's growing success, not just because he was desperate for finance, but also he wanted to publicise his new venture, the Alexandra. So Yoden, as an entrepreneur seeking ideas to support his financial comeback, came up with the original idea of a footballing knockout tournament. Many teams from across the city all competing to see who was the best team in the area. Yoden put up a trophy prize for the winning team. He called it the Yoden Cup. The motivation for Yoden was, as we have said, financial and for good publicity. When people talk about professionalism entering the game, they normally talk about players. Of course, members paying subs is really the first form of financial business in the game. Yoden's Cup tournament is the first time anybody tried to take any serious financial business advantage from the game. And so, to me at least, is the first big event of professionalism linked to the game's history. The tournament itself took place in early 1867, during February and March actually. It consisted of 12 local teams who, if you have watched the video before this one, their names will be familiar to you. Here they are. Sheffield FC at this time were just playing clubs from outside Sheffield, so decided not to take part. Two main knockout rounds of nine games were played. The semi-final, second place playoff and final all took place at Bramall Lane. For some reason, probably due to their performance record in the tournament thus far, Norfolk got a bye to the final. Hallam won the semi-final against Mackenzie and so the final itself was between Norfolk and Hallam. At the final match itself on the 5th of March 1867, which took place in front of 3,000 paying spectators, a world record for a game at the time, Hallam eventually beat Norfolk. This was, of course, the very first ever Association Football Cup final anywhere. John Charles Shaw, captain of Hallam, lifted the world's first ever Association Football trophy, the Yodan Cup. The success of the tournament led to the formation of the Sheffield FA, the oldest county football association in England. The notion of having a tournament annually hadn't occurred to anybody yet. If you won the cup, you kept it. So Hallam still hold the trophy and it wasn't competed for again. 
The cup later went missing, but was discovered in 1997 in a Scottish antique shop. Hallam purchased it back for £2,000. It was recently valued at £300,000. A year after the success of the Odin Cup, there was a first for yet another competitive tournament and another cup. The theatre manager at the Theatre Royal was Oliver Cromwell. Cromwell was later to be the manager of Yodin's Alexandra, but at the time of the conception of the world's second knockout competition, he was at the Royal, which was just opposite the Adelphi where the Crucible now stands. Cromwell's competition took place in 1868. It was inevitably called the Cromwell Cup. This time the target market was to be new and evolving clubs to give them a boost in popularity. The teams competing had to be less than two years old, so Cromwell's own team Garrick entered alongside Wednesday, Wellington and Exchange. I'm not sure why Wikipedia dates Exchange's formation date as 1863. This is on my find out more to do list. Garrick were hot favourites, but after Wednesday's first win, they got nervous and invited a few of Hallam's players to support their cause during the rest of the tournament. It didn't work because Wednesday beat Garrick in the final. The original trophy, the world's second oldest football trophy, is still in the Hillsborough boardroom on display. Four years after the success of the world's first ever football knockout competition in Sheffield, Charles William Alcock suggested to the English FA that it needed to devise its own tournament for its own association club members. This was, of course, the FA Cup. Links between the Sheffield FA and English FA were strong, them being the two major administrative forces in the game at the time. Characters like the Napoleon of football himself, and later both chairman and president of the English FA, also a Sheffield FC player, was Charles Clegg. He was from Sheffield. Clegg lived all his life in Sheffield, but in the early 1870s was already actively meeting and influencing members of the London-based English FA. Clegg, for example, played in the first ever inter-association game between the two associations held at Bramall Lane in 1871. He also, a year later, played for England in the first ever international match played against Scotland in November of 1872. The English FA knew about the success of the early cup tournaments in Sheffield. They knew a footballing cup of their own would be popular and help grow the game through healthy competition. They even asked the same factory in Sheffield that made the Yodan Cup to produce their first ever FA Cup trophy. The FA Cup did not happen by accident. It wasn't the FA's idea and they did not invent the idea of a cup. The idea of a competitive tournament had already happened four years earlier in Sheffield, thanks firstly to Yodan, then to Cromwell. The FA Cup was inspired by the success of earlier football tournaments held in Sheffield. It is not the first and certainly not the oldest association footballing competition or trophy. It might claim to be the longest running, but not a lot more. Yodin, a Sheffield adopted Irishman, invented team competition within football. In Sheffield, the only place on the planet that in 1867 had enough local active footballing clubs and an active culture happening to be able to successfully arrange a competition. Enough teams, enough pitches, enough players, enough interests, etc. It's Yodin's statue we should be seeing outside FIFA and the English FA's officers alongside at least Creswick. Sheffield does have other cup firsts to claim. Along with the Birmingham FA in 1876, the Sheffield FA created a cup competition for its association called the Sheffield Challenge Cup. This cup is jointly with Birmingham, the fourth oldest surviving cup competition in the world, and with Birmingham is the oldest English county knockout cup in the world. Wednesday beat Healy in the first final at Bramall Lane in front of 8,000 spectators. 
Just over the border from Sheffield in Barnsley, you'll find Workley Hall. This was, in 1878, the seat of the Earl of Warncliffe. In 1878, the Earl was looking for a way to raise funds for local good causes and decided to create a football tournament in his name. This tournament was the first English Charity Cup. The first final was again held at the football history flooded Bramall Lane and it was won by Wednesday again and again against Healy by three goals to two. The Warncliffe Cup tournament was played right up until the mid 1980s. Sheffield is the birthplace of competitive football. Competitive to the extent that you end up with an overall team winner who wins a trophy and a title. To my knowledge, it is also the inception of all competitive team sports in this context. This claim is thanks to two theatre owners who saw in football the potential for entertainment through competition. For Yodin, this was an original genius move. The next time you watch a competitive football match, especially if it's a cup tournament of any size, but particularly the FA Cup, the Euros, the Champions League, the World Cups, give a small nod to Yodin and his gift to football and sport in general. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe, and if you feel a need to, please leave a comment. Next time, we're going to look in more detail at Sheffield FC, of course, the world's first and oldest association football club. Till next time, 